said, well, Australia shouldn't host or co-host the next climate conference if we are giving public money to open up new coal, oil and gas projects. I completely agree with the Vanuatu climate minister on that. And I thought that this government had made a commitment that there wouldn't be any new public money for fossil fuel subsidies. But unfortunately, when the budget was handed down, we saw some tweaks, sure, but we saw about $40 billion of the last government's fossil fuel subsidies retained by this government, who are so poor they can't put dental or mental health care um, into Medicare, they can't raise the rate of job seeker. They're too poor to do that, but they're not too poor to keep $40 billion of the last government's subsidies for the coal and gas industry. And then they have the audacity to add $1.9 billion for a new gas export terminal without the consent of First Nations owners. I, might, I hesitate and am desperately sad to see. $1.9 billion for an LNG export terminal and petrochemical hub. Now, we just heard from Labor that, oh, look, it might do some other things as well. Don't, don't look too hard. Well, I'm afraid. It is directly a gas export terminal that will prop up gas uh, extraction from the Beetaloo Basin that the $50 million public grant fund, uh, which was proposed by the last government, is also being retained by this government. So this is a gas export terminal that will essentially create a market for the Beetaloo uh, Gas Basin, which also lacks First Nations consent and which would be an absolute carbon bomb. So I'm afraid so much for no fossil fuel subsidies and so much for being too poor to fund decent things in this country, not too poor to give yet more handouts to the gas companies that conveniently make large donations to both political uh, parties. The other thing that made me laugh cry was the Labor Party saying that this was a uh, sustainable development precinct and not to worry because it's going to be assessed under the EPBC Act, our federal environment laws. Well, I am an environmental lawyer and I can tell you that there are no climate impacts considered under the EPBC Act because we do not yet have a climate trigger. So I'm afraid it gives me no comfort whatsoever that a gas export terminal will need tick off from our current EPBC laws, which were written by former Prime Minister John Howard, because the climate impacts won't be considered. So I'm, honestly, you could not make this stuff up. We're at $42.7 billion now of public money over the Ford estimates over four years going to prop up the fossil fuel sector. $42.7 billion over four years. That is an absolute outrage from a government that said there wouldn't be any new public money for new coal, oil and gas, and from that same government who are crying poor when it comes to actually helping people with the cost of living doing things like increasing the pathetically low rate of job seeker which sees people kept below the poverty line. It doesn't add up, except when you look at the donations from the coal, oil and gas industry. And uh, of course, they only have to disclose that once a year on the 1st of February. So it's just a very cosy little stitch up here. And it's no wonder that Vanuatu's climate minister is calling Australia out and urging us to not have new fossil fuel subsidies if Australia wants to host the next climate conference. The Greens are firmly in agreement with that position. Those fossil fuel subsidies should have been dumped from the budget. There certainly should, have been, uh, should not have been $1.7 billion added for a new gas export terminal. And the Labor government need to start remembering that they'd one time made a commitment that not to have new fossil fuel subsidies, and they ought to stick to that commitment.